Would some honourable member care to move that the House take note of Mr. Ms. Speaker? The right honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, uh, if there's any issue that shows the growing gap between intention and reality on the part of this government, it's the shambles around partnership schools. And if you want an illustration of the shambles, it's this. The achievement of a, of a student, in fact the number of students, could be up to four, from partnership schools has become an embarrassment for the Labor government because they turned up at the Prime Minister's awards and she found herself embarrassingly in a photo with a young New Zealander whose achievement was being recognised but in a school where the Labor Party doesn't like its legal form. How ridiculous can it be? These high-sounding intentions about education, the aspirations of our young people, and a Prime Minister embarrassed about the achievement of what may be some of New Zealand's, New Zealand's most vulnerable young people, whose, whose effort and inspiration was recognised at those awards. So, Mr Speaker, that's where the Labor government's got us to. Achievement is embarrassing if it's the wrong person from the wrong school. I have absolutely no doubt that under the management of this government, if they had known those young people were coming to get Prime Minister's awards, they would have made sure it did not happen. They would have made sure it did not happen. And, Mr Speaker, that's before you get to the somewhat delicate issue of the Māori cabinet ministers doing deals with the schools that they sponsored. Look, it was always going to be a bit difficult. Well, New Zealand First should be listening to this because it's special treatment. It's a point of order. The right Speaker, I, know, I know this is a robust debate. But a member, and a member like that one, in terms of his seniority in this House, cannot allege deals of the character and the nature that he's alleging. That may be common in some political parties, but it's not with this government. Oh, no. Order. Order. Um, I, I, think, I think this is a robust debate. Uh, and, um, and, my, and my view, in, in, this, in this context, the word, the word deal uh, is not necessarily out of order. I don't think there was an implication of corruption, uh, and, and uh, therefore I'll allow the member to continue. Well, Mr Speaker, it, 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 it's really a simple issue. There's a number of partnership schools. Some of them were sponsored by people who are now cabinet ministers, and there's, a gr there's growing evidence that cabinet ministers, the cabinet, these are ministers covered by collective responsibility of the cabinet, on the one hand, have made cabinet decisions to pass legislation to close the schools, because that's what the legislation does. On the other hand, are behind closed doors having discussions. Now, what are those discussions about? It's probably not about closing the schools earlier. It's probably about how they can ensure the survival of those schools, which they sponsored. Completely understandable. Just shows you how ridiculous the policy is that a cabinet includes ministers who sponsored partnership schools, know the value of them and want to keep them open. And is, some, is it unfortunate that they happen to be two Māori ministers with Māori schools, which makes the other schools, the Pacific school, the other more mainstream schools, feel like they don't have special access to cabinet ministers who will advocate for them? And, Mr Speaker, What's most disturbing here is that the Prime Minister does not understand what is going on. I mean, what we're seeing here is a big back down and it's getting slippery and difficult and I would suggest legally complex. We found out today the government may be legally liable for payments of up to $15 million, not for more education, but to actually stop the education they may have to pay out $15 million to stop the superior, better education of 1,500 of New Zealand's most vulnerable children. How ridiculous is that? 
I mean, they used to promise to spend more money on more education, and now they look like they're stuck with spending 15 million on no education to actually stop it happening. And the Prime Minister has illustrated continuing embarrassment about this, does not understand the legislation is a guillotine. It chops the partnership schools. They're going to pass a law to close them. The only issue is, on what basis will those schools be allowed to reopen? And today I asked her two things, a guarantee. If they believe these schools should continue in a different form, then the government should, before negotiations, guarantee those children that's who it's for. Guarantee those children that if the school closes on Friday once Parliament legislates to order, close them, order, they can go order. to school on Monday. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I, I can't hear, but I presume the member's raised raising a point of order? Yes, Mr Speaker. Uh, in accordance with standing orders, I reissued a request made yesterday for uh, an application for urgent debate on a matter. I notice you haven't acknowledged or ruled on that. Uh, is it not normal for the Speaker to rule on uh, an application for an urgent debate? The, the, uh, the letter was opened in my office after question time uh, had started. Um, I will consider it and rule on it tomorrow. Jan Logie.